our teacher extraordinaire, Ms. Kelly Cavasso. Kelly Begin. <laughs> Kelly began her tenure at East Rockaway Junior Senior High School in September of 2015, has worked tirelessly to revitalize our art program. Walking into Ms. Cavasso's classroom is quite an experience. Students are working productively and independently while simultaneously engaging in conversations about their work and the personal connections that they have to their work. Students in Ms. Cavasso's class feel comfortable, challenged, and empowered to push the limit of what they're capable of accomplishing. And don't take my word for it. Take a look at our art department's Instagram feed or let the list of our students' accomplishments speak for themselves. For example, 100% levels 3, 4, and 5 on the APR exams. Over, six, <laughs> over 65 scholastic art and writing awards, including a gold and solo award in 2018. Scholar artists and countless others, and we have students here tonight just to honor her. And I believe we have three students who drove down from college just today to be here tonight, so that says a lot. Ms. Cabasso's dedication to ensuring our students receive the highest level of art education is evident in her attendance at national and state level art conferences, her meeting with teachers in other districts to enhance programs, and her involvement in the overall of junior senior high school course sequences and course curriculums. She's a member of the New York Art Teachers Association and the Long Island Art Teachers Association, Ms. Cabasso has a range of multitude of field, ex field trip experiences, including the yearly college portfolio review at Extra Art Museum. She's helped to create a visiting artist program, has written grants that have provided iPads, microscopes, and the visiting artists to her classroom. Furthermore, the list of accomplishments out of the classroom is quite extensive. As we have witnessed tonight, Ms. Cabasso has helped to create our annual Empty Bowls fundraiser, which has raised over $3,000. Well, before tonight was over $3,000, and I'm happy to report tonight we've raised almost $1,400 from night, tonight alone, um, our biggest turnout yet. For a local <laughs> Ms. Cabasso has consistently helped to connect our school and district to the town at large as a founding member of the East Rockaway Arts Council, as an organizer of the annual town art walk, the annual art show that coincides with the budget vote in May, and a digital art display at the East Rockaway Public Library. She's helped to beautify our school building with student artwork in the high school conference room, the creation of the We Rock posters in the entryway, and the layout of honorary plaques outside the auditorium. And that's in addition to her students' artwork that beautified hallways. She's been a visible presence and active participant in a wide variety of school events, including face painting and homecoming, stage director for the district musical, presenter at our yearly curriculum fair, contributed to musical, music concerts and rock Island program covers, and much more. Ms. Cavasso is a true asset to our school community, and I look forward to her continued instructional and professional growth. I feel confident that Ms. Cavasso provides our students with quality, highly engaging instruction on a daily basis, and consistently, consistently helps our students find their passion in a safe and nurturing learning environment. It is for these reasons and many, many more that I recommend to the superintendent and Ms. Kelly Cabas will receive tenure. Congratulations.
congratulations, Kelly is truly a superstar. And what an honor to have students take their take time out to be here to honor Ms. Cavasso. That really speaks volumes, much more than any of us could ever say. And thank you for coming down. I hope you're doing well. So proud of, of your achievements too. Our students have really thrived under your leadership and in your classroom is an amazing place. And we are so thrilled to have you. So congratulations. I never have success with that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, this evening, we're going to continue uh, with our program this evening um, by speaking a little bit about um, We're going to talk a little bit about tonight our school quality survey, or as some people call it, a school climate survey. Um, we're very pleased um, to share with you our plans for this, as this is not only something that's now required by New York State, but something that we feel is going to give us a lot of important information to help to make our schools even better than they already are. So, um, Okay. So um, the school school climate survey is very much tied to the mental health initiative that New York State has put forth and that we are working furiously and hard on. You'll be hearing a lot more about that later in the year when we do a presentation about some of the progress that we've made. But I wanted to start out with some mental health facts. I'm not going to read all of these, but these are recommendations that promote mental health in, an edu in the educational setting. And these are some of the qualities or concepts or things that should be present that will really help our students to feel comfortable, safe, and well um, in our school environment. And I said I'm not going to read all of them, but one of the most important things is promoting a positive school climate, as you can see at the bottom. Um, we need to know how to do that. We know that we every school district has a climate or it has a culture. And when you're working in that district, you're very much comfortable in that culture. And sometimes you're not even aware of some of the things about that culture. And so it's always good to get really good feedback. When we have new people come in to our school district, sometimes they bring a different perspective but very quickly people assimilate to the culture. I know we have a wonderful positive school culture here in our, in our schools. They're very warm and welcoming. We know our teachers have great relationships with our students, but we know that we can do a little bit more. And we know that, that mental health and suicide um, awareness is very, very, they're really on, on the front burner today in schools. And so we wanna make sure that we are very much in tune with our students with our families, with our teachers, about how how our school culture or school climate is perceived by all the constituents or the stakeholders in our school community. So um, this is now a requirement. As you can see, the, there was a pilot phase in 1617. Uh, in 1718, about 40 schools and charter schools in New York State <coughs> participated in conducting a school climate or a school quality survey. And then last year, there were about 105 uh, schools and charter schools. And as of this year, all districts are required now to administer school climate surveys. So as you will see, this is quite um, a big undertaking. In order to do something, uh, in order to do something like this and to make sure that you get valid and reliable information back, um, you really have to do it in a very organized and, and almost scientific way. We'll tell you a little bit more about what that's going to look like here. Um, one of the important things to remember about school climate, it is the single most predictive factor in any school's capacity to promote student achievement is the quality of the school climate. And we'll tell you a little bit more about that as we go on. See why that's important. As I mentioned, um, New York State began a mental health education and literacy initiative um, in May of 2018. The regulations for 
formalizing mental health education were amended. Mental health was always a part of the health curriculum. However, um, because our society is changing and we see the needs in our society for young people to support them in a much better, more intensive way, and also to educate them about their own mental health and wellness, this is now a mandate that's somewhat enhanced. Um, there have been a lot of different components that have been added to this, and the school climate survey is just one of them. Um, again, these uh, regulations speak to support school in a climate of care. And that's really more and more important as in, in today's society. This is this shows the relationship between school climate and well-being. I am going to read it because it's really an important statement. School climate is the way school culture affects an individual's sense of safety, acceptance, and wellness, and consequently is a critical determinant of their ability to achieve success in school and in life. A positive school climate helps students to feel safe and connected to teachers, peers, families, support staff, and administrators. And as I said, we know that our kids do feel connected, but we often have new students come in who are new entrants to the community. They didn't grow up here, so they may not have those deep connections. Sometimes kids go through life events that change um, their demeanor. They may be dealing with issues or trauma, and so they, their whole attitude towards school changes, and some kids withdraw. So we need to be very much aware of, of who our kids are, how they act, um, what, what are their emotional struggles, and part of that is really having a very supportive school climate or school culture. So about our school quality and climate survey, and we use those terms interchangeably, we're going to be using the word school quality survey, believe it or not. Uh, we're working with um, a consultant group called K-12 Insights, and they shared with me that they stopped using the word climate because when they put it out there, some people thought they were talking about the weather or the temperature in the school, believe it or not. So they deferred to the term school quality and that when you see this coming out in January, um, the term will be school quality, but it is interchangeable with school climate. That's why I used both of them tonight. So the survey will be administered to staff members, um, parents, um, and students in grades three through 12. Students in grades three, four, and five will receive a somewhat simplified survey, um, and grades seven, six, I'm sorry, six through 12 will all receive the same survey. The surveys are very similar, um, whether they are a parent survey, a staff or faculty survey, or the student survey. The survey um, is going to get feedback from all of our stakeholders on the overall school quality, the academic support that they receive, student supports that are available, student leadership, family involvement, and safety and behavior. As I said, um, we're working with a company that's um, that's a service that's provided through BOCI, so we received uh, we received state aid back on purchasing this service. They will be administering the survey and compiling the results. This is a very, very high quality, valid and reliable survey. And when we are finished and we get the results, we will be able to compare our schools and our district to national and state norms, which is really important because we wanna know how we measure up. How do our students measure up? How do they see our schools? How do parents see our schools compared to uh, children, students and families in other school districts in our state and across our country? Um, the results will be analyzed um, at both the district as well as the school level. We will be able to identify strengths as well as opportunities for growth um, while understanding the perceptual disparity among stakeholder groups. So sometimes one group of stakeholders has one perception as to how things look or feel um, and kids may think differently or some kids may hold a different view than other kids and we're able to, we'll be able to really drill down Actually, we can't do that, which is why we're working with uh, an expert in the field who can do that for us. Um, state and national benchmark data will also be available. So some of the things that one of my colleagues did the survey, they found out that, that about 40, I believe it was about 40% of a particular grade level of their students were sad on a regular basis. Now, although the survey is anonymous, we will not know anybody's name um, who completes the survey. That's important information to have. And what we do with that then is, is of course, the most important thing. And K-12 Insights is going to support us to develop action plans for our buildings so that we can address that type of data and information that we receive, even though we will not know individual 
student names who may feel that way. But that's quite a large group of students who are not feeling good about themselves coming to school every day. We will see, of course, what our results are. This is um, the development timeline. As you can see, we've been very busy um, way back since actually even in June, we, uh, our administrators uh, got to meet the team and we did some training on setting goals. Um, we had our first survey planning session. I'm not going to go through all of these dates, but as you can see, um, we have just shared the surveys with our administrators and we've gotten back some feedback about some things that may not be clear, some questions that could be clarified. Um, we don't change the questions all that much because we won't be able to have benchmark data for those questions. But if there are additional questions that we want specific to our community, we can add those in. We just won't be able to compare that information for that particular question to the state or national um, benchmark data. Um, there's a lot involved here. Um, the survey will be available um, in English as well as in Spanish. Um, families, well, I'll move on. Families will um, will be hearing a lot more about it in the month of December. We'll be sending out some press releases. We'll be sending out letters, um, and we plan to launch this. The actual survey will be launched after the holidays on January seventh, and we expect it to be opened for about a two-week window. Um, we'll be monitoring the number, the percentage of responses that we, re we receive, and then we can always extend um, the window that the survey is open if we feel we haven't gotten, gotten enough responses. Um, unfortunately, when, you, um, when we did our survey for our strategic planning committee a few years ago, and then we also did a family engagement survey, um, 40 certain districts that I know got about 40%. I think we got around that for our family engagement survey, but that's, that's a really high um, uh, response rate, um, believe it or not. And in most surveys, I think it's only about 20% or less. We hope to get more parents to respond because we're so small. And because of our small sample size, we, we struggle with this all the time to make um, to draw conclusions and to make inferences about the data on such a small sample size is hard. So we will be sending out reminders. Um, we hope to do maybe a student video where we have our students um, encouraging families to, um, to complete the survey. Of course, we hope that all of our faculty and staff complete the survey because their perceptions are extremely important as well. And of course, the student surveys will be done in school during a particular class. So we will be setting aside time of course, if students choose not to participate, they can't be forced to, but we'll encourage them and we will be explaining to them the purpose of the survey and hopefully they will see the value in giving us their feedback. Um, families will get an email. We do have emails for just about every single family. There were really only about, I think, 12 families that we didn't have emails and now I think we even have those 12, uh, thanks to our parent coordinator who's been working on that. And so families will receive a link in an email that's specific to them. Um, of course, we won't know that, it's, been, uh, it's anonymous, but you will get an email with a link that you can click on once to complete that survey. If you have students in two schools, you'll be able to take the survey, um, I believe, a second time. But you, all that information will be displayed uh, when we send home notices about that. We'll be posting this on our website, as well as some reminders um, about, uh, about the survey and its purpose, uh, because we know that everybody is not here tonight. Um, after the survey is completed, um, the company K-12 Insights, the consultants we're working with, will provide us with preliminary results. Um, they will report, um, debrief to review, um, draft a formal report and discuss post-survey communication and that should be delivered by the beginning of February and then they will provide us with additional reports as well as um, follow-up. Um, they will be working with each building team to share the results and the most important part as I said before is to develop action plans is, is what do we do with these results now that we have this information and we know this about our faculty about our students and our families what do we do to improve our school climate or the quality of the education that we provide to our community? So as I said, um, the results will be shared with the Board of Ed, of course, the district and building administrators, as well as the faculty and the staff. 
They'll be used to develop the actionable steps to address the opportunities for growth in each building. And of course, if there are trends across the district, that will be addressed as well. And they'll be shared with the Strategic Planning Committee, which um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about tonight, um, to identify any areas as the basis for district goal setting. Um, when we did our strategic plan in the past, uh, the first time that we did, it was, I guess, five years ago, um, we conducted our own survey. It was kind of an internal survey that we uh, developed with the support of Syntax. Um, we did do Survey Monkey, and it was useful. It was very useful, but it, it will not have the, this is a very robust approach to that because we will have comparison from district, up, not only our district, but from uh, our state as well as national norms, which will be important information for us to use. You know, of course, while realizing that we are a unique and small and special, very special and different community and keeping that uniqueness in mind as we interpret the results. So um, that's just some of the areas that are associated with uh, school climate and school culture. So does anybody have, does the board have any questions? Do we have to report any of this back to the state or does the state just say all schools have to do school climate studies? The, there is discussion, well, the commissioner has now left and there is like, I think we are on our second interim commissioner. So I really can't speak for the state. There's a lot of empty seats up there. But um, I think the original plan was to have a data dashboard of some type where the information will be reported to the state. I don't know if they're going to get to that this year. And uh, we don't, this, I don't believe this is something we're going to have to do annually. It would be too much to collect this data every year and too big of an expense. But um, that remains to be seen. I think a lot of things are put on hold. But when, when Commissioner Elliott was there, that was the original vision was to share that data and then aggregate it in some way and report it out to the state. Of course, districts can choose different surveys. So some people are going through BOCES. Um, Nassau BOCES is providing um, this as a service, as well as different other BOCES and other companies that districts are also working with. But you know, it needs to be a standardized, of course, a reliable and a valid measure, which is why it's something that's a little bit more than the district can take on. Um, I commend Mr. Schaefer. He did a school climate survey last year with our students and used the results for, uh, I think, some great purposes. But I think this takes it to the to the next level. And then, do you know if have there been any rumblings with Newsday knowing about this? And do we know if this is something they'd like to sink their teeth into to compare school districts on Long Island? Well, I don't plan on sharing it with them. <laughs> so, this is something, okay. something really good for us internally to make decisions. Yeah, this is not something we'll be publishing. I mean, we will share the results, um, but I, I don't think, you know, obviously certain aspects of it we will share. We will share it with the Strategic Planning Committee, you know, areas that we certainly want to work on in terms of areas for opportunity. I don't think it's going to show anything well, I, I don't know what it could show. It should, could show in some places that kids don't feel safe in their schools, because obviously those, those are some of the questions. I don't expect that to be um, the result here. Thank you. At least in the majority. Yes. Will we take steps to make sure that we don't get multiple responses from one person? Yes. Okay. It, it's, it's designed in that way. Um, each person gets a unique um, link that can't, it can only be used once. So once somebody has entered the survey, they can't. It, it takes really about 10, 10 or so minutes to do, so it's not like it's going to be something you have to do over multiple sessions. So, you know, sometimes I've started a survey and then I realize, my God, it's so long, I, I, I want to come back to it. And sometimes you can't get back into the survey, so, uh, but all of that information will be provided and people cannot share their link with anyone else. It won't will only work once. And again, that's one of the reasons we're, you know, fortunate this company can manage that for us. They have the technological capabilities. Someone else had a question? Yeah. Yes. So it's online? Is yes, it, it will be online. Is there going to be a telephone number if you have a question or you have a problem? Uh, yes, sure. And, and for parents or, uh, it, it actually will be going to parents. At this point in time, it won't be community members because it's specifically 
the questions are really very specific to parents whose children attend our schools at this point in time. There are other surveys we might do in the future that would be, it would engage the greater community, but right now it's really parents and students and faculty members. And we do have paper surveys that will go out for anyone who does not want to take it on a, um, you know, on a, com on a computer or who doesn't have a computer. We will open the school up for families that want to come in and take the survey if they don't have access to technology. But all of our students in grades um, five through 12 have a, um, you know, have advice that they take home and uh, they really do all have access. If they don't have access to the internet at home, they can go to the library and um, so they, they will be able to take the survey. But should people not and request it, we will allow people to come here and take the survey electronically. Any other questions? Okay. So I'll just tell you two, two things, a couple of things about the um, School District Strategic Planning Committee. As you know, uh, this we're going into year five, so it's time to plan for the next five years. Uh, this committee will convene in January. Um, last time we had about 35, approximately 35 people, volunteers from the community, and that, that committee was open to community members as well as parents, administrators, board of education, teachers, support staff, um, PTA, uh, anyone from the community who lives in the area who would like to participate. Um, we will be posting this on our website with a response form uh, for people who are interested. I would encourage you to please join us. Um, excuse me, we probably will put something in the Herald as well for those who, people who don't look at our website um, so that we can get a broad representation from our community. Um, our community, our committee will meet monthly, it does meet in the evenings, um, and we will meet monthly from January to May or June, depending on whether we need a June meeting. Um, last time we had, it was just amazing, it blew me away that people, uh, that the different committees that we had, we had subcommittees that addressed each of the four uh, goal areas, achievement, opportunity, innovation, and communication. People self-selected what they were interested in, and after um, uh, the process, which I'll briefly go through with you, um, I, I was just, it was just amazed me that these subcommittees actually wrote the goals themselves. Um, and was all I did over the summer was wordsmith the goals and format it, and um, they really were published almost exactly as each of the subcommittees um, wrote them. And Ms. Hecht, you were on the committee, you can attest to that. It was really a wonderful, wonderful process. And, I think Mrs. Bruso, you were on the committee. Too. Were you on this? Well, I know there are people here who are on the committee. So um, the first and one, one of the most important steps of strategic planning is to do a, what's called a SWOT analysis, and that uh, that analysis identifies the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And a lot of that will, or at least some of it, will come from the strategic planning. I mean, the um, I'm sorry, school quality survey. We will also look at uh, a lot of data that we've collected, um, achievement data, uh, suspension data, attendance data, um, program data, how many, what percentage of our students participate in AP classes, what percentage of our students get support services, what percentage of our students are classified. So all of that gives you kind of a state of the district um, so people know where we're at and where, what's our starting point. Um, and then we will develop priority areas, goals, and objectives. I believe that um, in preliminary discussions we've had with the board, we've talked about keeping the four priority areas because they, are, although they are general, they're still really relevant and appropriate, and much of what we do as a district will fall under that. We always can change that as well if, if that um, is necessary or add a fifth area. Um, so that's always open to... Um, uh, you know, to, to be edited. This is the process that we engaged in. So the first step was really to talk about who are we, what are our beliefs, our mission statements, um, look at our vision, um, where are we now, and that's what I just spoke about as part of SWOT analysis of looking at all kinds of data. As I didn't mention, we will also look at our budgeting, which uh, we're in great financial shape. Um, as you all know, we passed the bond, and we will thank you all properly. It, uh, due course, because we're thrilled that the bond passed. Um, 
and um, again, talking about getting as much stakeholder input as we can. Uh, we set strategic goal areas, strategic priorities. Um, we then develop performance, performance objectives, measures, and targets. And then we um, develop action plans and the cycle starts all over again. And as we are going through this process each year of the five-year plan, we evaluate um, where we are relative to the goals that we've set each year. So it's a continuous improvement model and um, it's worked well for us thus far. And I'm really excited and looking forward to moving forward and see uh, what people believe are, is important for our district over the next five years. Does anybody have any questions relative to that? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Lewis. If there's anybody else who needs minutes from our prior meeting or this evening's agenda, I do want to remind you that we have those up here in the front. At this time, is there anybody who has questions or comments related to items specifically on the agenda? Okay, moving on to number four. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes from our October 22nd, 2019 meeting? So moved. So moved by Mrs. O'Hagan. Second. Seconded by Mr. Sloan. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? So moved. We acknowledge the monthly correspondence um, and our monthly financial reports. We had three correspondence this month. At this time, I'd like to turn the microphone over to Mrs. Ruiz for her recommendations. Thank you, Mr. Kahn. Okay, uh, tonight, as you know, we have I have the pleasure of recommending that the board grant tenure to Ms. Kelly Cavasso, art teacher, uh, effective December 3rd, 2019. Also recommending uh, that the board accept the following resignations. Ashley Teveramina, substitute teacher aide. Lynn Castellano, monitor. Jason Andrews, business teacher. Lisa Henshaw, substitute monitor. And Allison Reynolds, substitute. Also recommending that the board approve an increase in the uh, position for Fernando Gomez, part-time foreign language teacher, from 0.4 to 0.6 MTE, effective November 18th. Also recommending that the board approve the revised winter sports coaching schedule dated November 19, 2019, um, due to the um, increase in the interest in our junior high school volleyball. Uh, we've had a huge, huge turnout. We're going to be adding a second team. Um, and Mr. Barth was able to, due to um, prudent budgeting, uh, had some funds in his budget where he's able to support um, an additional coach for that team. We'll be able to uh, allow many more students to participate. Um, also recommending that the board approve the appointment of Ashley Tavaramina to the position of teacher aide, effective November 20th. Recommending that the board approve the appointment of Lisa Henshaw to the position of part-time monitor. And recommending that the board approve the following temporary assignments at the salary approved by the East Rockwood Board of Ed in the non-contractual salary schedule. And there is one um, correction in, um, before I read those, if we can amend the, um, what do you need a motion to do that? The spelling of uh, I mean, if you want to seven. do that, then we can approve it as a amended. So, so what is your recommendation? Brandon, Brent, it's Brendan, not Brandon, B-R-E-N-D-A-N. It's number seven. 
So that's Jacqueline Ludwig, substitute teacher aide, Michael Barron, substitute security aide, Elizabeth Rubin, Rubin, temporary teaching assistant, Dana Storno, temporary teaching assistant, Stephanie Hector, concert supervisor, Ricky Kloss, athletic supervisor, and Brendan O'Reilly, substitute teacher. Thank you, Mrs. Ruiz. Are there any questions on items 6A through G? Okay, then can I have a motion to approve items 6A through G with um, 7G amended to Brendan Dean spelled B-R-E-N-D-A-N. So moved. So moved by Mr. Sloan. Second. Seconded by Mr. Volpus. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Um, opposed, abstain, so moved as amended. Thank you. Okay, moving on to other items. This evening we will approve the following resolution. Be it resolved the Board of Education accepts and approves the board resolution attached here to as Exhibit A, setting forth the results of the November 14, 2019 special district election and that was for the successful bond vote. B, to approve the following resolution. This right here is a change um, of order where the amount um, was reduced by $6,200. C, to approve the contract for Oasis Youth Drug Abuse Services between East Rockway Union Free School District and the Nassau County Department of Human Services, Office of Mental Health, Chemical Dependency and Development Disability Services for chemical dependency services for the period January 1st, 2019 through December 31st, 2019. We also look to approve the consultant services contract between the East Rockway Union Free School District and Sherry Berman of B Independent Productions, LLC, did in November uh, 1st, 2019 for choreography services. To approve the special education services contract with Hewlett Woodmere Union Free School District for special education services for one parentally placed student for the 2019-2020 school year. F, to approve the special education services contract with Rockwell Center Union Free School District for special education services for two parentally placed students for the 2019-2020 school year. G, to approve the health and welfare agreement between East Rockwell Union Free School District and Seaford Union Free School District for health and welfare services for the 2019-2020 school year. H, approve the professional development consultant agreement between the East Rockwell Union Free School District and Joseph Shiami, dated September 17, 2019 to approve the consultant services contract between East Rockaway Union Free School District and George Christopher Marza, dated November 19th, 2019, for hearing officer services. And we also look to accept the following donations from Club Rock, $100 for the girls' JV volleyball program, from Mrs. Susan Torberg, Batters Leg Guards for the softball program, valued at $50, from the Center Avenue School PTA, curriculum enhancement grant in the sum of $50, another one in the sum of $50, and a third in the sum of $52.58. We also accept donations from the Rain Avenue School PTA, an enrichment grant value at $95 for the band set, the musical score of the piece, a physical education enrichment grant valued at $305, a check in the sum of $1,399 from the Rain Avenue <coughs> PTA for sixth grade activities, um, from the sixth grade activities fund to cover half the cost of the bus for the green Field program and a check in the sum of $1,399 from the PTA to cover the balance of the cost for the bus out of green Hill. Can I have a motion or are there any questions regarding items 7A through J? No. Can I have a motion to approve items 7A through J? So moved. So moved by Mr. Volpus. Second. Seconded by Mrs. O'Hagan. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstained? So moved. Okay, we look to approve the CSC and CPSC recommendations. Are there any questions? Can I have a motion to approve the CSC and CPSC recommendations? So moved. So moved by Mr. Schlope. Second. Seconded by Mrs. O'Hagan. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstained? So moved. We have one budget transfer, um, transaction number 20-005. Can I have a motion to approve the budget transfer? So moved. So moved by Mr. Volpus. Second. Seconded by Mrs. O'Hagan. All in favor? Aye. Opposed, abstained, so moved. Moving on to number 10, policy matters. 
Uh, Mrs. O'Hagan, if you can give your report on the policy subcommittee work. The policy subcommittee met on Monday, November 4th to review four policies. The first one was voter registration for students. This is a new policy that is required for adoption due to changes in education law. The second one was for investments. This is a policy meant to safeguard our district funds and to minimize risk. Updates reflect changes in law and are in line with recommendations from our auditors. The third one is child abuse in an academic setting. This policy recognizes that children have the right to an educational setting that does not threaten their physical and emotional health and development. Child abuse by school personnel and school volunteer violates this right and is strictly prohibited. This policy has been updated to reflect changes in education law. The last one is field trips and excursions. And this one actually we decided to go to further review. We're going to bring it before the board at our next work session. The policy subcommittee is scheduled to meet on Monday, November 25th at 5 p.m. in the superintendent's office. Thank you, Mrs. O'Hagan. So the policies up for adoption this evening are 5605, voter registration for students, 6240, investments, and 9620 child abuse in an educational setting. Since that was moved forward by the policy subcommittee, we do not need a motion. We are just voting on it this um, evening. All in favor of adopting those three listed um, policies? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. So we've approved those three policies. As Mrs. O'Hagan indicated, sorry, indicated the field trip and excursions one, we will continue to look at in our next work session as a um, full board. And the other five items, or four items rather, will be up for review as well. Moving on to 11, my board president's report. Last week at our work session, we discussed the budget um, timeline for the year. I want to remind all of you that most of our in-depth discussions regarding the budget will take place on the same night as our budget, um, as our work sessions. And we really encourage you to sit in on these meetings as well. The first budget planning discussion will be on December 10th. Summaries will be provided at each of our monthly regular business meetings as well. Um, we've talked to you in the past about our um, mental health clinic possibility uh, through Northwell Health that we're considering um, joining with other neighboring districts. We're currently reviewing the contract with our attorneys as well as BOCES. If we are able to engage in the service through BOCES COSER, it will come in a significant cost savings to the district. We continue to be excited about this opportunity and we'll keep you informed as things progress. I'm also excited to tell you about my school bucks. This is something we've had a request from the community to be able to um, take money for lunches using credit cards. Uh, sorry, I'm from Massachusetts and credit cards. I've done that a couple times. Um, credit cards. And Ms. Rio has investigated various possible ways to achieve this. And we're excited to be providing this service during the school year um, through a program called My School Bucks. That part will probably roll out later in April, but as soon as we roll our work out all of the details of the agreement, we will keep you posted. Um, last time we met for our work session was also the bond vote, and the board is thrilled at the passage of the bond with 64% voter approval. We'd like to acknowledge the contributions of past trustees, Patty Nicoletti and Kristen Octara, who were part of the earlier stages of the bond process and we share the success with them. We want to thank the Initial Facilities Committee comprised of community members, faculty, and administration, most notably Ms. Strio and Mr. Daly, for looking at all of our facilities and identifying areas to be considered, the building principles for representing and advocating for the needs and interests of their respective buildings, including the children who learn and the professionals who work within those walls. We want to thank our superintendent, Mrs. Ruiz, who got us answers um, when we needed them and coordinated and attended all of the meetings and logistics, facilitating communications necessary for all phases of bond preparation while continuing to oversee all of the regular day-to-day -day operations of our district. We'd like to thank John Grillo, our district architect, for providing historical knowledge of our buildings, past bond projects, technical and cost expertise, as well as process knowledge of submitting and filing plans with the state. Syntax, our public relations firm, for helping establish a timeline and develop print and media promotional materials. It helps spread the word and ensure that the community 
was informed. We want to thank all of you who attended work sessions, board meetings, and forums, asking tough questions, offering suggestions, and providing words of support. The ERTA and staff who live in the community who helped spread the word and vocally supported the bond. And finally, we want to thank all of those who voted. Communities are healthier and stronger when their citizens participate. Thank you for your participation and support. Now that the bond is passed, more specific details will begin to unfold as a timeline for plans, submissions, and work is established. We will continue to keep you updated on all phases of development. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And that concludes my president's report. Well, you can never get too many thank yous. So I am thrilled. I know Mrs. Rio is thrilled. We were just all thrilled that um, the bond passed, um, and we really do thank the voters for their support of our bond. 64% uh, is a really healthy approval uh, margin, and um, we can't wait to get started in the planning phases, although it will take some time to get the approval. We already have a meeting set up with our architect to start uh, planning, and it's really thrilling to see uh, the teachers excited. Um, I know our new home and uh, Family and consumer science teacher was very excited. She just got hired and now she'll get to design, uh, help design a new, um, a new a new room, as, as I'm very excited about that as well. So um, thank you again, uh, Mr. Uh, Gamash. So eloquently thanks the many, many people that made this possible. Um, and I, I don't want to rain on anybody else's parade. We know how difficult this is. Um, we know how much we all pay in taxes on Long Island. And we really felt that this was reasonable. And obviously the um, majority of the community felt it was as well. And I know some of my colleagues in other districts were not as fortunate in terms of the bonds they put up. Um, so it was very nice to receive a lot of congratulations from colleagues and uh, people in, you know, in my sphere, and I'm sure Mrs. Grios, you know, that our, our bond passed. And I think we did do a lot of listening and I, I really congratulate the board for their hard work. It's, it's very difficult to, make decisions as we do every year in the budget but we do have the tax levy cap that helps to guide us and we know we have expenses this is a little bit different process and it was the board really spent hours and hours and hours deliberating over what were the best projects to put forth so i do thank the board because it's probably one of the most important things that they do and they did it in a really cohesive and thoughtful way um, so it was a pleasure working with all of you and i thank you for your support. And of course, I thank Mrs. Grio for her really all of the work uh, along with Mr. Daly. Um, so uh, on, on to my report in the area of achievement. Um, in addition to professional development sessions, teachers in kindergarten through grade two are making site visits to Lindbrook schools to learn more about Eureka Math program. These visits are really helpful for teachers to, to talk with other teachers who have already implemented the program and gain some valuable insight into um, and getting a deeper understanding of how the program works. Uh, at this year's Walk Along for Lupus, um, we had Team East Rockaway um, High School, as well as Jennifer Circle, had over 55 students from grades seven through 12, and they re raised nearly $1,500 for Lupus Alliance for Long Island and Queens. And I really congratulate our kids. Just the turnout in um, the empty bowls was amazing uh, to think that we raised 1400. I think it's the largest turnout we ever had. Uh, it was really delicious and wonderful to see that whole cafeteria filled with uh, just not only students and parents, but many, many community members. We did reach out to our senior citizens uh, group. Um, our new parent coordinator spent time, went over, took a visit, personally called uh, some of our seniors up, and I, I believe a number of them did turn out. So we were glad to share that event with them. And of course, our students really do so much for our community. Um, they are to be commended. Um, 207 uh, East Rockaway Junior Senior High School students were recognized as September Students of the Month at the November PTA meeting. It was lovely to see so many families and students come out for their recognition. A congratulations to the girls varsity volleyball for being the runner up in the Nassau County Championship. It was tough. Um, it was, I, I was fortunate enough to be there. Um, they played a tough team, but they did a fabulous job. Um, Mairead uh, Connor competed in New York State Cross Country Championships in Plattsburgh, and she finished the course with the best time of her career. So congratulations to Mairead. 
88% of our full varsity teams earn so scholar athlete distinction, boys soccer, girls soccer, volleyball, boys cross country, girls cross country, cheerleading, and tennis. That's amazing. Um, so congratulations to all of our student athletes. Madeline Miel, uh, 10th grade, and Stephanie DeAngelis, 8th grade, were selected to participate in this year's Long Island Strings Association Festival, or LIPSEP, and um, uh, NASA, I'm sorry, Secondary Festival. This year, and for the second time, a team of East Rockaway High School students participated in the annual design and build competition known internationally as Construction, through primarily a this is primarily a competition for professional architects and engineers. Okay, so I'm sorry, select student teams have recently begun participating in this unique food drive. This year our design um, was a Rubik's Cube. You can see it on our website, or is it still up at the EAB Plaza? Oh, sorry, well, there's pictures of it on the website. It was amazing. It really was amazing, and I, I thank the teachers who gave up of their time freely um, to support this. I know Mr. Poland, Ms. Curcio, and Ms. Morano. Thank you for, for all of your time. It was really great to see our kids. Um, this year, our design was a Rubik's Cube, which told 1,764 cans, and we won best concept for the use of labels. And all that food gets donated. Um, congratulations to senior Nicholas Iannucci. He has been chosen to be nominated for the New York State Presidential Scholar in Career and Technical Education nomination. So congratulations, Ms. Iannucci, and to Nicholas. In innovation, our second grade coding club students have been writing algorithms to solve puzzles. They have been pa um, pair programming and are developing strong collaboration skills to solve puzzles. We're thrilled that Mrs. Healy brings that all the way down to our second graders, as well as to our STEAM, in our STEAM program in grades three through six. And on November 5th, Superintendent's Conference Day um, included trainings for teachers on Google Form, Pear Deck, New Line, Interactive Boards, and Discovery Education Tech. That teachers were given time to work with these instructional strategies into their lesson plans. Uh, the day began with a powerful session about suicide prevention. So it was a really fabulous day. Um, I thank our teachers for their participation, um, and I hope that everyone found the day fruitful. And I thank Mrs. Hecht for her hard work along with the Professional Development um, Committee that did an outstanding job. And I know people enjoyed it because the feedback, the full 17 pages of feedback <laughs> that was collected was overwhelmingly positive. <laughs> so we love to be able to provide those opportunities and then get the feedback, especially when it's positive and constructive. In the area of connection, um, our Mental Health and Wellness Steering Committee met for the first time uh, this year. We have 25 faculty, staff, and administrators um, who joined this committee and we're all in attendance. We have, uh, we're working with social worker, uh, Mr. David Heimowitz. Um, he's also a mental health and wellness expert from Nassau County um, at no cost to the district. He comes uh, through a grant through the county where he is able to consult and work with districts. He'll be attending our meetings and working with me behind the scenes to plan for the meetings and also provide um, professional development and um, awareness to the committee for our um, the model that we're going to develop. The charge of this committee is to develop, implement, and communicate a clear district-wide vision for mental wellness, identify wellness-focused approaches, programs, and initiatives that support the New York State uh, education department, mental health, education, literacy, and schools, and make recommendations for professional development to support our school community to address the mental wellness needs of our students. Um, some of the essential questions that guided the work of our first meeting is what is our vision for mental health and wellness in East Rockaway? How do we create and share our vision? How do we engage our school community to support um, the vision? And what will success look like when we've reached that vision? Um, there was also suggestions about reframing the name so that we can better engage people. Um, again, there's still a real stigma associated with mental health when we use that terminology and we want to move more towards mental wellness, but engage people because this affects everyone. And it's not about waiting until kids or, or adults are struggling with mental health issues, but really to increase awareness that this is something that can affect everyone, but we also, we hopefully want to preserve and create mental wellness in our school community. 
Um, Center Avenue senior choir members will be visiting East Rockaway Senior Center on November 22nd to spread some holiday cheer, singing carols and playing board games with the local seniors. And Rain Avenue K Kids collected candy to send to troops overseas in conjunction with uh, East Rockaway Kiwanis. And I want to thank Kiwanis for being there here tonight to support um, our empty bowls. I know they advertised it among their memberships, so thank you to them. In advisory, students focused on bullying prevention strategies for the month of October. They're now creating posters, um, try to take a look at some of them. They're out in the halls to spread positivity. The work will include actual pictures of students, locations within the building, and real life school scenarios. This is a part of creating a positive school culture, is making it welcoming for kids to see themselves positively presented with positive messages. So kudos to Ms. Terranova for her work with the advisory and also to our teachers. Um, November 4th, um, thanks to Mrs. Kosser and her team uh, of ENL teachers, they presented a parent university. Students and families came to learn about technology options and ways to help children excel. Small group workshops ran from 5 to 6.15, followed by a lovely whole group dinner that allowed administrators, teachers, students, and families to connect in a pressure-free setting. Spanish translation was provided by volunteer high school students who have successfully learned English in our ENL program. And thank you to Mr. Rouse for also presenting to our families that evening. Um, Saturday, the 16th uh, of November, East Rockaway Junior High School students hosted the VEX Robotics Squared Away Tournament. Approximately 125 children from 15 different schools and organizations participated. There are several more tournaments at different schools in the upcoming months, providing more opportunities for students to employ engineering principals to continually improve their robots and experience success. Um, in the area of opportunity, most uh, many fifth and sixth grade students were chosen to participate in all county music groups and the Long Island String Festival. In total, 15 students from our elementary schools were selected, and they will be individually recognized in the spring when we recognize our music students. Senior chorus and members of the junior senior high school earned an exciting opportunity to perform with the Evoco Voice Collective, um, which is usually held at um, the cathedral in Garden City. I know there's a picture of it. I was not able to go this year, but I've gone in the past. And thanks to Mrs. Silver, our choral director, who performs with that group. It's If you ever have an opportunity to hear them, it's, it's like a professional a choral concert, and they invite students to participate. And this year we had uh, Mairead Connor, Samantha Marks, Angela Polizzi, Ashley Croto, and Spencer Senson. Um, they were among a handful of students from Long Island who were selected to participate in the Journeys and Awakenings concert. And yes, it was held in the Cathedral of the Incarnation in Garden City. Um, we usually have only had one student um, selected, but it's wonderful that we had so many students attend. We also um, held a, um, a financial aid night uh, for our uh, families uh, for the college uh, application process and the FAPSA form. We had 37 students visit Barry Tech on November 13th to explore the BOCES program. So this is great. I think that's probably the largest group that we've had um, attend and visit. So we. We know that that's uh, now a viable option for all the students. We haven't had to turn anybody down. I know sometimes students don't get the program they applied for, but we've not really turned any students away. Um, so students will be working with their counselors to complete the preliminary applications for next year. Uh, about 60 students have begun rehearsals for this year's musical, The Wizard of Oz. And the, as the performance approaches in February, the student participation will increase to more than 100 students. That is unbelievable. I bet that's the largest participation we've had, Ms. Morano. <laughs> I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you do it every year. That is really amazing. And Mr. Seglio and Silva, and all of our music uh, teachers who support that, as well as the art teachers and, and um, Mr. Gurkin behind the scenes. Thank you. I'm really looking forward to it. It's a favorite of mine. Uh, additional, as I mentioned, additional junior high school volleyball team has been created due to the large um, level of interest, and that concludes my report. Thank you, Mrs. Ruiz, and thank you to all of the building level administrators, too, who provide that information to Mrs. Ruiz so that she can share it with us and the community. As you can see, there are a lot of exciting things happening in our schools and in our classrooms. 
this point, we move on to number 12, Good and Welfare. We extend our condolences to Frank Altamore and family on the passing of his grandfather, Bob Adamant, Adamanchik, sorry, on October 24th, 2019. Also extend our condolences to Christine Carmel Moy and family on the passing of her father-in-law, Yotun Moy, and condolences to Carolyn Fernandez and family on the passing of her father, John D. Vote on October 29th, 2019. Um, at this point here, we move on to our period of public comment. I did not receive any um, forms, but the period of public comment, please just remember and note that anyone wishing to speak at this time um, can come up to the microphone. Please keep your comments to three minutes and refrain from addressing topics related to personnel matters or individual students. Such concerns should be discussed privately with an administrator or the superintendent at an appropriate time. The board is here to listen and cannot provide immediate feedback or engage in open dialogue. Any necessary follow-up will be noted and provided at a later date. As I noted, nobody had filled out a form. Are there any comments? Okay, so we'll move on to our board member comments and we will start with Mr. Ellis. Now that the bond is passed, I'm looking forward to the board working together with the administrators, the teachers, coaches of the district and, and shaping what the uh, potential bond will be at the end and hopefully for many, many years to come, the district will reap the rewards of that. The second thing is the communication subcommittee is going to have its first uh, meeting in the weeks coming and uh, that communications committee that uh, Neil and myself were on from last year uh, provided many opportunities to bring things to the board and we hope that will continue this year. And then the lastly is, again, Mr. Gamash, you put it so well, so there's no need to repeat any of those thank yous because there were so many people that were involved in the board. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Volkis. Mr. Schlepp. Um, I wanted to thank um, our superintendent for last week's uh, presentation on the strategic plan. Uh, you know, being a part of that over the last five years, she gave a very thorough report and, and clearly it's moved our school district in a positive direction. And I want to thank everybody that was involved with it and thank our superintendent for our leadership and willingness to try new things to try to move our school district forward. I'd also like to thank everybody involved with the bond vote, everybody getting out to vote. Um, to me, it's almost like a dream come true. We're finally going to be able to give our kids something that we've been trying to do for a long time. And it's going to make a dramatic difference to our school district. Thanks for everybody getting out to vote. I also wanted to thank uh, Mrs. O'Hagan here, uh, Kristen and Pete uh, McNally for jumping in as our new policy subcommittee. As you could see by her fine job tonight, they came up with uh, very good suggestions for the board. And I salute them for jumping in as new board members for a very difficult job and doing a good job with it. And thank you for everybody coming to the meeting tonight. Mrs. O'Hagan. <coughs> First, I would like to extend my gratitude to all the administrators, staff, and community members involved in promoting the bond. As a result of your support, our kids will receive increased opportunities, and our schools will receive the necessary renovations and exciting enhancements. So thank you very much. Um, secondly, tonight's Empty Bowls event is just another testament to our community involvement, and when kids spearhead and are involved in such service projects, they learn a little bit more about life and they gain an understanding of what it means to perform selfless acts. They feel a sense of pride and experience gratitude for what they have and the opportunities afforded them. So I just want to thank Ms. Cavasso and Ms. Galante for guiding our kids in such endeavors. I think they are such great life lessons for them. Um, also, congratulations to Ms. Cavasso for receiving her tenure this evening, and thank you all for coming out and have a happy Thanksgiving. While writing the thank yous, I knew I was going to forget somebody. And I kept saying, no, you're not thinking your wife and children, and this isn't like an Oscar speech. I forgot to thank Mrs. Posse. She ran our vote. It's an insane amount of work. She does it with the budget vote every year, and this was on top of that. And as the meeting continued, I looked over in a direction typing away. You fool, you forgot to thank Mrs. Posse. So I apologize for that, but I'm happy I didn't think of that while I was driving home. <laughs> On October 
25th and 26th, I attended the 100th anniversary NISPA annual convention. On the first day, I participated in a workshop entitled Redefining Ready New York Style. It discussed a possible way to redefine college and career readiness and improve high school graduation requirements. A new look at home, or sorry, a new look at homework was another district's efforts to make homework both more meaningful and less burdensome. Uh, the third workshop I attended was called Full Steam Ahead, which was about an implementation of STEAM related programs in another Long Island district, as well as the mental health initiative leading the way, which highlighted the role school boards can play in better ensuring the mental health and well being of the students in their care. During the convention, hundreds of workshops are held on various topics, which allowed me and other board members to sit on ones. Um, and I chose ones that I thought were of particular interest to our district's goals and initiatives. On the second day, I acted as our voting delegate at the annual resolutions business meeting. It's been one of my favorite responsibilities while serving on the board. Though less contentious and shorter in duration than past meetings, it still had a few thoughtfully debated items resulting in close votes that required a manual count. I spoke to our board's position on a few of those items, perhaps the most important being our opposition to the requirement that local school districts be responsible for evaluating the substantial equivalency of education delivered in non-public schools. Since this was a position supported by the NISPA Resolutions Committee, getting a no vote by the majority of boards uh, within the state was a much more difficult task. And I'm pleased to say that the resolution was voted down. Um, it will not have the support of NISBO and our voice helped in the successful opposition to that resolution. I also want to thank Mr. Schloth for attending as well and going to the pre-law conference, um, as well as the workshops that he attended. And it was fun having conversation and lunch um, with Mr. Schloth up there in Rochester as well. Um, one of the most powerful aspects of the convention, in my opinion, is realizing this year magnitude, power, and responsibility of the work done by school boards here at home throughout our region, the state, and nationally. As a rel relatively short tenured board member serving for just over five years now, I look in awe to those who have served 20, 30, or more years in service to their communities in public education in general. The experience is always inspiring and rejuvenates me to continue the important work here at home. Mr. Sloth mentioned um, Ms. Ruiz's in-depth report on the strategic plan last month. Part of me feels disappointed that more people were not in attendance to see this meaningful summary of the hard work of our administration and staff, as well as the success of our students. But that feeling of disappointment is overshadowed by the pride I feel in our accomplishments and the appreciation I have for all of the people who have made the strategic plan a success. Not every school district has a strategic plan. And now in our fifth year, I feel at times that we take the strategic plan for granted. It feels like it's always been there. It's like our lungs inhaling and exhaling, or our hearts beating without having to think about it. It's easy to forget how it even came to be or to lose sight of whose plan it is. Setting a course for excellence, the four focus areas, achievement, opportunity, innovation, and connection, and the Compass logo were developed by the board during a full day retreat. Once direction was developed by the board, the superintendent and her team worked with the strategic planning committee, a group of 38 stakeholders, including administrators, staff, parents, and board members representing all of the schools within the district. Their collaborative efforts added all of the details to complete the strategic plan. The strategic plan belongs to all of us. It guides our financial planning and informs our instruction. It relies heavily on the daily efforts of our teaching staff for its ultimate success. And I hope they are aware of how much we appreciate their contribution to its success. As a board member, some of my proudest moments have been meeting candidates during the interview process who bring up the strategic plan as a reason for their interest in our district. It gives them a clear sense of who we are as a learning community and what we value most. It provides comfort, a sense of purpose and direction. The strategic plan is a living plan. Last year, we met for another retreat to develop vision and mission statements that complement the ideals of our strategic plan and to commit to embarking on the next phase of its development. Once again, as Ms. Ruiz mentioned earlier, 
Um, the committee will move into the next phase, and it is our hope that you will consider playing an active role in this important process. Thank you. Um, can I have a motion to adjourn this meeting at 8.17? So moved. So moved by Mr. Volkes. Second. Seconded by Mr. Schlur. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstained. So moved. Thank you for coming. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.